I wouldn't pay $95 to see any of these people. <laughs> been kind of having an interesting week. Been having an interesting week. I'll tell you how it started. On Monday, a TSA agent grabbed my booty. <laughs> yeah, thank you, one person. <laughs> yeah, and I know that's like a lame thing to be making jokes about in 2018. Cause come on, give them a break. They're just doing their job. But, you know. At the same time, you know, I wasn't even at an airport. <laughs> Yeah, just picking up my dry cleaning. <laughs> he comes over in his nice crisp blue shirt, gives me a little honk. I'm like, you're outside your jurisdiction. <laughs> Granted, I don't know the Patriot Act front to back. I'm going to do some Googling when I get home, though. <laughs> your manager's getting a sternly worded email. <laughs> my wife thought it was hilarious, though. <laughs> She thought it was great. I am a married man. I am a married man. I've been married for four years to the love of my life. She's great. Like a lot of people, we met online. Uh, we didn't meet on any of the big dating websites, though. You know, like eHarmony or Match. We met on a very unconventional dating website. Uh, Overstock.com. <laughs> she was a pick of the week. <laughs> and I was reduced for immediate sale. <laughs> A match made in heaven, you know, terrible return policy, that's what she calls me. <laughs> terrible, or a late night impulse purchase, terrible return policy. Our wedding was pretty fun. I liked it a lot. She showed up, check. That was, that was an important one for me <laughs> to get in there. Uh, the, wedding, uh, the wedding was really nice, uh, although the planning of it was a little difficult because uh, right after we got engaged, the first thing we started doing was we started looking for a venue. And uh, I don't know if anyone here is married, uh, you might remember. That's not, a, that's not as easy as you think it's going to be. Because in your mind, like, we're in love. They're going to throw open the doors, beg us to come have it there. Nah, no one cares. <laughs> no one cares about your love like you do. So in the meantime, we made a list of all the people we'd want to invite to our wedding. You know, like cousins, aunts, uncles, you know, the mailman, the vet. Everybody goes on that first list. Uh, and then in the meantime, uh, my wife discovered this venue uh, but she found out it was going to cost $95 a person if we wanted to have the wedding there. You know, like, I don't know your guys' financial backgrounds. I didn't really come for money. That was a lot more than I was planning on spending. But at the same time, my wife really loved this venue. And it was like everything she ever pictured in her head when she was a little girl. It was in a backyard. There was twinkly lights hanging down. There was a fountain in the middle. We forgot to turn it on. That's not important. <laughs> The point is, it was in her head and it was there. So instead of immediately disregarding it and going somewhere else, what we did was one evening she came over to my apartment and she brought that piece of paper and she said, hey, I know this is harsh, but I think we need to take a look at this list and I think we really need to ask ourselves, which of these people aren't worth $95 to us? <laughs> And I had to say, honestly, <laughs> I wouldn't pay $95 to see any of these people. <laughs> so I put me down for 20 on grandma, all right? <laughs> put me down 20, I'll go 25, all right? Because truthfully, I can see her for free, okay? <laughs> if we're going out for lunch later, grandma's probably paying. <laughs> not sure how, hasn't worked in 35 years, always has a knot full of 20s in her purse. <laughs> Pretty sure grandma's mixed up with some unsavory people. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about getting married was my wife and I decided to combine our bank accounts. You know, get one of those joint checking accounts, which I was really looking forward to because, you know, I always felt like I would be really good with money. Just never had any. <laughs> That's a joint checking account. That's gonna be a big opportunity for me. <laughs> Cause I was no longer always gonna be like, is it my money or her money? It'll be we are filing for bankruptcy. <laughs> it's gonna be teamwork, a bonding exercise, you know, like on the count of three, we need to run out of this restaurant. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought it was happy hour pricing. I did not realize I cannot afford this. <laughs> You know, we need to have a serious conversation about stealing copper wire. 
You laugh now, it's the industry of the future, folks. My advice, gentlemen, get yourself a girl who can shimmy. <laughs> and buy her some gloves, because that's going to spark. Her hair is going to get messed up. No one's going to like that. So that's my advice. Something nobody told me about prior to getting married that I, I wish I would have known is uh, when you get married, you're automatically included in all of your spouse's family photos. You know? Which makes sense, you know, you're part of the family, you're gonna be in the family photo, but you forget, it wasn't always like that. You know, because when you're engaged, yeah, sure, you know, you'll be in 90% of the photos. But they're always sure to take at least one without you. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Just in case six months from now, trouble rolls along. They will need you ruining every precious family memory. <laughs> my father-in-law was slick about it. My wife graduated from grad school. It was in New York. Everybody flew out. Grandma, aunts, everybody was there. He had a nice move. He had me stand on the far right side of all the photos. <laughs> yeah, just in case six months from now, he had to do some cropping. <laughs> he had to bring the corners together. Get rid of my protruding caveman-like skull. <laughs> That's what he calls it. I say deep-set eyes, but he... <laughs> That's Clifford. He calls it the caveman skull. We get along great. He's a nice guy. <laughs> Found out recently my wife's better looking than I am, which we presumed, you know, but we got it confirmed <laughs> in one of the most aggressive way possible. Because what happened is uh, we decided a couple months ago we we're going to go to this fancy new restaurant downtown, and we just, it was just a whim decision. We didn't make a reservation or anything. We decided, just decided, let's just go. Well, let's treat ourselves. Let's just get in the car and go. We're like, all right. So we got in, we drove downtown, and sure enough, the block was packed. Couldn't find parking anywhere. So I thought I'd be a gentleman, let her off out front, let her go inside, go grab a table while I parked a couple miles away. And, <laughs> and so I did that. I circled the block a few times, find a spot. I get there, I go inside to join her. I'm sitting down next to her at the bar for literally 10, 15 seconds max. A bartender runs over, looks at me, looks at her and says, um, excuse me, miss, um, is this man bothering you? <laughs> That's humiliating, right? That's the love of my life. My wife, worst part though, she looked at me, looked at him and's like, yeah, kinda. <laughs> You guys have been bothering me for the better part of seven years now. <laughs> Your timing's off. I appreciate you getting here. <laughs> now I adore her. She's my best friend. She was my friend for years, even before we got married. It was a beautiful story. I'll write a blog about it someday. <laughs> That's how you know you've made it these days, is when you blog about it. <laughs> now, we still don't see eye to eye on everything, though. I'd be a liar if I said we did. Like, for instance, my wife really hates it when I get really wrapped up and obsessed with conspiracy theories. And I get mad that she keeps working with the government to cover them up. <laughs> One of us will cave. <laughs> It'll be me. Heard a politician say recently that if Americans don't shape up, in 50 years, we're all gonna be speaking Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Like we're smart enough to learn Chinese. <laughs> Come on, I've been living in this country for 34 years, everybody, speaking this language this entire time. I still don't know the difference between there, there, and there. <laughs> you know, fairly certain Mandarin is not gonna come a lot easier to me. <laughs> so there. <laughs> or there. <laughs> Or that other one, that fancy one, you got a shift to get to it. You guys know what I'm talking about, those ambidextrous, lucky folk. We're really proud you can type with two hands. <laughs> Super jealous of those guys. Do you guys remember in the 90s when uh, everybody was really into water conservation? We had those slogans that say things like, uh, if it's yellow, let it mellow. You know. If it's brown, you probably got a urinary tract infection. <laughs> it's not supposed to look like that. Drink some cranberry juice, flush them pipes. <laughs> you guys ever experienced that weird, um, uh, what do they call it, like a phantom 
vibrate sensation, where it feels like your phone is going off in your pocket, but in reality, you're just having a stroke. Does that happen to anybody else? Two to three times a week, everything smells like toast. It's... Everything I eat tastes like pennies. This is not good. I was raised in the church. Any churchgoers here tonight? Yeah, I'm all right, a couple of you guys. I grew up in the church. I grew up in a very conservative Christian family. Uh, my parents actually wanted to give me a name from the Bible. They chose Adam. Kind of shows you how much energy and thought process they put into the matter. Yeah, my parents, they made it all the way to page three. So. Pretty excited for that child rearing process. Now, is this close to being named Table of Contents, cousins? A coin flip decided they thought King James, that's a little presumptuous. Let's crease the spine on this old girl. Take a deep cut. I go to a pretty cool church, do a lot of cool technologically advanced stuff. They pride themselves on being a real tech savvy church. Like, so it's so much so that like everybody that I go to church with has like a Bible app. You guys know those things? And it's like, and like whenever the pastor's like saying, all right, everybody turn to 1 Corinthians, whatever. Everyone just pulls out their phone, starts scrolling, looking at the verse in the Bible app. I, I, won't, I do it too. No. The only difference is uh, I don't have the Bible app. <laughs> I just use it as an opportunity to catch up on text messages from my buddies. <laughs> it's like, oh, this reading comes from the book of my college roommate, Craig, huh? <laughs> Ooh, that's a funny meme, Craig. Back to the worship. Another thing that they do is uh, my church has online tithing. You guys seen that yet? It's like you can pay your tithes and offerings, direct deposit. It's a good system. Good system. I guess they're getting sick and tired of people uh, conveniently forgetting their wallets on Sunday mornings. <laughs> they put a placeholder in place where it, uh, the online tithing. It's a good system. However, a couple flaws I'd like to discuss with you guys, see if you agree on this. Uh, for instance, number one, I think we need a sticker. You know, like an I voted sticker? <laughs> Something like that, a lapel pin. I, what I'm saying is I need proof, all right? Because <laughs> I'll be honest, these ushers, they are not believing me. <laughs> it's like passing that thing down the aisle. Oh, sorry, I paid online. They're like, well, that's between you and the Lord. <laughs> You know something I don't. <laughs> Another problem that I've encountered with, uh, with the online tithing is uh, this is probably just a, a personal beef I've got with it. But three months ago, my church accidentally withdrew three times the amount of money they're supposed to from my direct deposit. And I got to tell you guys, that's an uncomfortable phone call. <laughs> on at the church being like, hey, sorry to bother you. Uh, you accidentally withdrew too much of my tithing money. <laughs> no, I want to go to heaven. <laughs> Not that bad, though. <laughs> <laughs> by, would you, by the way, would you mind prorating last month's money? Uh, it kind of sucked. <laughs> I feel like you guys weren't keeping your end of the bargain. I grew up going to Sunday school, learning all the lessons. I would hear these terms I didn't understand. Like I remember one Sunday, they were teaching us about the concept of spending an eternity in heaven. And uh, I didn't understand that. I didn't know that unit of measurement. I didn't understand what's an eternity. What does that even mean? And so I asked my mom, and she's so sweet, and she sat me down. She's like, Adam, picture just the biggest mountain in the world. You know, just like bigger than you could even possibly fathom. Like Mount Everest with like Mount Hood stacked on top of it, and Mount Rainier, and Mount Fu, just higher than the clouds. You can't, your eyes can't even believe what you're like, just the highest possible mountain. And then imagine that once every thousand years, the teeniest, tiniest hummingbird will fly by that giant mountain, and with just the tip of its tiny feathery wing, it'll scrape the top of the mountain and then it will fly on again and come back again in another thousand years. And once that hummingbird flies by that mountain, once every thousand years, and the abrasiveness of its little soft velvety wing causes that giant mountain to dissolve into just one speck of dust, that, my son, is one second. <laughs>
Gonna be honest, Mom. I kind of got bored just listening to that definition. <laughs> Starting to think I might not have the legs for eternity. <laughs> you know what it feels like in eternity? Uh, well, that story you just told me. <laughs> Maybe we could find a truncated version of this one. Cliff's notes it up because I, I lost the point. <laughs> I became a father last year, guys. I have a little girl at home. I became a, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I have a little girl. Her name is Lucy. She's very sweet. I love her to death. Uh, yeah, Lucy, it's a good name. Although we didn't tell anybody that was going to be her name uh, during the pregnancy process. And not because we're like Kardashians or something. And we had some big People magazine spread revealed where we're going to unveil her name. Just because, you know, nobody ever has good intentions when they ask you the name of your child. It's never like, hey, what do you think about naming your little girl? It's like, oh, you know, we're leaning towards Patty. Like, Patty, that's a great choice. I love it. Go with God. Yeah, I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> no, it's never happened. <laughs> so I was like, Patty? Ah, Patty's trash. <laughs> you gotta give your daughter Patty? Patty's a garbage name. <laughs> I like to think of it as my grandma's name. But... <laughs> That is now what I'll be remembering going forward. <laughs> Becoming a dad's taught me a lot about myself. Like I've learned that my wife really doesn't like it when I say that I babysit our daughter. <laughs> yeah, and she really hates it when I charge her $15 an hour. <laughs> she gives me fridge access though, so it's, <laughs> it's a good trade off, you know. Being a parent's hard, man. Being a parent is exhausting. Being a parent is so tiring. I cannot believe that in our country, maybe even in this room tonight, there are people out there intentionally fighting for soul custody. <laughs> it's like, you need more hours with a kid? I'll throw you a couple. <laughs> She's wearing me out. She's cruising right now, which means not walking, not crawling, just hurting herself constantly. So <laughs> yeah, I'll let you take her out for a couple hours and let me get a rest for the first time in a year. <laughs> Nah, she's great, man. I love Lucy. Which is, which is just, it happens to be her name and what everybody thinks I named her after. <laughs> she's getting red hair, too. I don't, neither my wife or I have red hair, which makes me a little curious, but also, <laughs> it's just not good. It's gonna be an interesting look. Oh, you're a comedian. You had a daughter named Lucy with red hair. Ha <laughs> ha, no, it was an accident. <laughs> Didn't mean it like that. But here's the big thing going on with us recently is uh, we, my wife's been finally, she's at an age, my daughter's about a year old now, so my wife's finally able to like get out of the house a little bit more and just leave it, just the two of us. We had a little daddy-daughter date the other night uh, that concluded me giving her a bath, uh, and which is, you know, it's nice, it's sweet, some little dash. She gets to splash around, play with ducks. I get to struggle to make sure she doesn't fall over. It's a beautiful experience. It's, <laughs> Uh, but the one thing about Lucy is she's been cursed with my hairline, which means she has a widow's peak that runs roughly to her belly button. <laughs> and, you know, and you know, it's bath time, so I'm responsible for that. So, you know, I gotta get all the shampoo in there, I gotta get it all, rub it down in there, and then, you know, after you shampoo, you gotta rinse it out, you gotta get it, you can't leave any shampoo in her hair. And uh, she's at the age right now that there, there's nothing, and I mean nothing, in the world that she hates more than getting water in her face. Like, she just despises it. It's like, the worst thing that could ever possibly happen is her getting water, she just freaks out. But then you realize she hasn't really, she hasn't really lived much yet. <laughs> she hasn't learned all these amazing things out there to hate. <laughs> she hasn't been to the DMV. <laughs> I'd stub the toe, she isn't even walking yet. She'll get to that stub toe and she'll get there soon. Meet her maids, ho oh, ho, watch out. You know, parking at Costco, she's got all these great experiences. <laughs> coming up for her soon but right now just water in the face that is her least favorite thing in the world and so I knew I was gonna have to like pour some on there get the shampoo out of her out of her widow's peak that's now at her toes and I decided oh I was gonna I was gonna hook her up you know become father of the year I had a sneaky idea I thought how about I lay a washcloth over her face <laughs> then take the water and pour it down on top of that after, you know, 10, 15 seconds of her kicking her legs and flailing her arms, I took a step back, looked at the situation like, oh my goodness, I just waterboarded my 10 month old. <laughs> you know, they say you shouldn't do that. You should not commit acts of uh, interrogation that may or may not have been banned by the Geneva Convention against your 10 month old. But I gotta tell you guys, it worked. You know, she gave up the sleeper cell. So. So. 
It was a good situation for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like being a dad. Uh, something that I really like about her is she was free. She was free, 100% free. Like, I, we, the, the story behind it, we haven't, we've still, it's been 15 months now, we have yet to get a bill from our hospital. <laughs> Not even like a statement of like, here's what you would have paid if the insurance didn't drop in. Nothing. You know, as far as I know, they still think we're in there somewhere. <laughs> and I'm going to let them keep thinking that uh, until, you know, uh, bills come around, then it's going to be pretty sad. My credit score is going to get ruined, but I'm having a nice year right now. Yes. <laughs> I am having a nice year. I uh, recently completed a 5K. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it. I completed it. I, I successfully thrust my limp and prone body uh, across some uh, demarked finish line. They gave, uh, they, they gave me a t-shirt. It was a Hanes beefy tee. I put it on immediately. Had to. Had to cover up my bloody nipples. So, I hadn't been jogging in a while. There was some chaffage going on. <laughs> when I got across the finish line, this really ripped, muscular, personal trainer type guy, he came up to me uh, and he started uh, talking to me about my jogging style. Yeah, he said I had a very unique <laughs> jogging style. He said there's actually a term for what I do. It's generally referred to as um, uh, walking. <laughs> That's the popular nickname for this hot new breed of jogging. It'll come out here soon. It's big, on the, it's big in Los Angeles, the walking subculture of jogging. I need to lose some weight. Uh, not for like medical reasons, not like I need to lose some weight. I just, I just need to lose some weight uh, before it becomes an event. You know, like right now, if I was like to drop 15, 20 pounds, people would be like, good for you, tightening up. All right, proud of you, buddy. Making some good decisions for the future. I like what you're up to. But if I wait another like 20 pounds, it'd be getting like emails being like, I'd like to congratulate you on your radical transformation. <laughs> you don't want to get to a point in your way that it becomes a radical transformation. So I'm trying to avoid that right now. I'm trying to get away from that. I, uh, I have a day job, which uh, there's an unspoken rule in comedy. It says you're not supposed to talk about your day job because it ruins the illusion that we do this for money. <laughs> but come on, you guys have seen my act. <laughs> you know I'm not paying the bills with this. <laughs> I'm paying all the bills with it. I'm paying some of the bills with it. I'm paying the Netflix bill with this. <laughs> I make $7.99 a month doing stand-up. <laughs> That's the one screen, no HD plan, by the way. <laughs> Hopefully the show will go well and I'll get to go to two screens HD. That'll be nice. But anyway, so I was at, I was at work uh, and I was really tired one morning from out uh, pretending to earn a living at stand-up the night before. And I, and I started yawning in the middle of a meeting and my boss looked over and caught me, but I didn't want to own up to the fact that I was yawning during her presentation. So in, I, instead I just kept my mouth agape. <laughs> Like, this quarterly budget presentation is blowing my mind! <laughs> I have been traveling a lot, and when you travel a lot, you eat poorly. Because you're not in your own kitchen, you don't get to cook up your own. The people say you don't have to eat poorly, but I think you do. <laughs> I think that's one of the treats about going on the road, is you can eat a little poorly. And when you eat really poorly, you learn little tips and tricks about all your favorite bad eating spots. Like I learned something recently. Did you guys know you can pre-order a Papa John's pizza up to 21 days in advance? <laughs> Sincerely, using their online ordering app, 21 days. But no longer than that. I mean, come on guys. That would just be ridiculous. <laughs> Imagine working at Papa John's, having to feel those kind of phone calls. Hello, thanks for calling Papa John's Pizza. Can I, what? 22 days? Were you some kind of madman? Some sick lunatic? So, wait, a what? Oh, three weeks? Oh yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> that's a perfectly sane amount of time. 
to get your reservation place for a medium pepperoni. We understand. Beat the rush. 21 days. It's a long time in the future. You can get a lot done in 21 days. Do you guys realize in 21 days, you can order yourself a pizza. Put in your two weeks notice at your current job. Just hang out for a week. Get hired at Papa John's. And make your own pizza. Yeah, forget Back to the Future. That's the closest we've come to time traveling. <laughs> Is the Papa John's online ordering app. I got a little bit of a tax refund last year. I don't know about everybody else here. I got a little what? A little bit. A little bit. More than I usually get, though. So that was good. Got a little refund. My wife and I decided to treat ourselves to something we've needed for a while. Decided to get ourselves a new bed. Yeah, we decided to go big this time around. California King. Yeah. Because we decided we wanted to sleep in the same bed. Uh, technically. <laughs> you know, we want to be able to tell our friends we're sleeping in the same bed while never touching or seeing each other. <laughs> California King works great. I haven't seen her in weeks. <laughs> I hear her, though. That CPAP machine, it buzzes. You, know? <laughs> you can roll away, but you can't hide when you got that app now. <laughs> I will hear you and I will find you. <laughs> when we bought the bed, they got my furniture store so that they could pick up and remove my old mattress for free. I told him that's okay. I can deflate it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you bust your hump on my account, good man. This thing right here, we call this the labor saver. <laughs> Do a cannonball into those things, all the air goes shooting out. <laughs> Something else I've been seeing when, uh, when I'm traveling, I'm using a lot of strange bathrooms. I'm using a lot of bathrooms at like comedy clubs, hotels, everything in between. And I found there's a consistent across the platform is a lot of people are using those Glade bathroom air fresheners. You know those cans, you know. They're pretty cool. They work pretty well. Thought of a slogan for them though recently. It's like Glade bathroom air fresheners. When you want to think of diarrhea every time you smell a mango. <laughs> Since 1986. <laughs> That's the association I make. Hopefully you guys <laughs> don't have that same one. I live in Pasadena, California. It's a, uh, it's a good neighborhood. Not too much excitement going on. We have two Jiffy Lubes. Not trying to brag. <laughs> we have two, and like any place where there's two of any kind of chain, there's a good one, and there's a bad one. <laughs> The good one, fantastic. Always has fresh coffee. You know, usually a lot of uh, gas stations and, uh, and service stations, they have that, cr that powder creamer for your coffee. Not these guys. The good stuff. International delight. The bottle, mmm. Fantastic Jiffy Loop. <laughs> However, the story I'm gonna tell you tonight is not about that Jiffy Loop. <laughs> it's the bad one. <laughs> this Jiffy Loop stinks. All right, you know when you roll into one and you go and you're pulling into the parking lot, there's like a little line that you roll over and it dings and they come running out to help you? You roll over there, they don't run out. <laughs> they just wave at you from the window. <laughs> it's like a little help, they'll like change your own oil. <laughs> it's like, that's literally what I'm here for, sorry. Yeah, this Jiffy Lube's not good, man. They're trying, they are trying, to their credit. They're trying to turn things around. Like a couple months ago, I saw a new sign in their window that said, yes, we have Wi-Fi. <laughs> Answering the question, nobody in my neighborhood was curious about. <laughs> hey, you think that dirty Jiffy Lube's got Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah, giggle about it now. You should have seen that next morning when that Jiffy Lube lobby was just flooded with college students. <laughs> Then aspiring screenwriters jacking for elbow space under Spanish language rerun of Divorce Court. <laughs> it was a scene in there, guys. It was a hopping in place to be. And you know what? I, I live in that neighborhood. You know? There's a lot of stuff going on. I think my favorite part of it is that they're trying to compete with traditional coffee shops by offering Wi-Fi. You know? Because there is a Starbucks two doors down from that Jiffy Loop. And I think that's what inspired them. <laughs> 
They're like, look at all those kids flooding into there. We can do it too. No, Jiffy Lube, you can't. <laughs> but I had to know what was going on, so I went in there, you know? I traipsed in there in the afternoon. It's like, I gotta, I gotta get the beat. I'm writing for my neighborhood newsletter. Gotta know what's going on. I went in there and I logged on. I got news for you guys. They're just stealing that Starbucks Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> Yeah, the giveaway for me was the password was Starbucks One. It's, it's like, you should change that. They're like, we don't have access. I'm like, that is a situation. That is unfortunate. Prior to us uh, starting to uh, try to have a baby, we, uh, we decided we'd go on a baby moon uh, to try to do all these things we've wanted to do prior to uh, the time when evidently your life changes. We didn't know at the time if it would or not, but we thought, let's gamble. <laughs> Let's assume that things are gonna change. My wife had a list of places she wanted to go. She put down Napa, you know? So I took her to there. Unfortunately, I took her to the wrong one. The auto parts store. <laughs> Got her some new shucks and struts. <laughs> Get her car rolling like a dream. She was upset though. <laughs> the one place she really did like going, however, is, uh, is like there's a, she grew up in San Dimas, California, and I don't know if you guys know San Dimas, there's a really popular water park there called Raging Waters. Yeah, wow, that's a pretty big reaction <laughs> for a water park in a different state. Yeah, it's a, it's a good water park. They've got a lot of interesting stuff going on in that water park. I had not personally been to a water park in 15, 16 years, but she made this suggestion. I thought, yeah, that sounds fun. Water park, okay. I haven't been body shamed by a roving pack of 13-year-olds in a while. <laughs> yeah, let's pull that bandage off. <laughs> yeah, so we went, and I gotta tell you guys, I had a pretty bad time. <laughs> I had a pretty, pretty bad time at the Raging Waters, because I don't know if you guys have been to one in a while, but you look at water parks a lot differently when you go to one as a full-grown adult, as opposed to when you're like a revved up, you know, hormonally charged teenager. For instance, you read signs. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Some of them I wish I would have read as a kid. Some I'm glad I disregarded. For instance, we we're about to enter this giant wave pool. And right before we went in, I saw a sign outside of it that says, do not enter wave pool if you're currently experiencing active diarrhea. It's <laughs> a good sign. <laughs> I'm not really sure where they felt the need to print and laminate 45 of those. <laughs> I'm assuming there was an incident. Uh, just gotta take a gamble and assume that's exactly what happened. Uh, I don't even know how you enforce that. <laughs> Seems like a self-policing type thing. <laughs> gotta tell you the buddy system, that doesn't work. <laughs> a little check and pat, not on my watch. <laughs> I also don't know why they had to differentiate uh, active diarrhea. <laughs> Is stagnant any better? <laughs> Let's just stay completely away from that genre of poop in general. Uh, get that out of my pool. The other sign that I saw a lot of is, uh, is almost every slide we went down, uh, there, was a, there was a sign that had a height limit. And this kind of confused me. So I, I asked the park attendant and they said, oh yeah, you know, we have a lot of very narrow tubes. You know, like people, if they're too tall, they might sit up, smack their head. It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. So it's, it's you know, it's a mandatory thing. We have a height limit. You know, I was like, oh, okay. That makes some sense, height limit, I get it. Yeah. However, uh, none of the rides we went on had a weight limit. And they should. <laughs> they should have a weight. And not for fear that anyone's gonna like break a slide. That is like, you know, these are very strong, big screws. Just for uh, physics. <laughs> Just for physics sake. Cause I don't know if you guys remember what happens when you combine sleek downward facing plastic uh, with water. Uh, but the heavier an object you set on that plastic, the faster it will go. <laughs> uh, which I learned the hard way when I decided to enter the speed slide. Uh, which if you haven't been to a water park originally, it's a, it's a straight wide, it's a triple bumper. That's what makes it famous. It's got three bumps. You start at the top and it goes one, two, three, into a pool. How can anybody screw that up? Figured out a way. Because <laughs> what I did, I hadn't been to a water park in probably 15, 20 years and arguably, you know, like 100 pounds heavier. And so I did what I used to do when I was a svelte athletic 15 year old, get myself a nice bobsled start. <laughs> 
Yeah, get that inertia build up. Object in motion stays in motion. That law still applies. <laughs> I took off. <laughs> First bump, back comes up just a little. That's not a good start. <laughs> That's not how you want to begin things. But at the same time, uh oh, can't do nothing about it now. <laughs> I am locked into this nightmare. <laughs> Second bump, whole back comes off the slide. <laughs> that was the sound it make. <laughs> As I, my back left a hickey on the speed slide. <laughs> Just a suctiony pop of flesh and plastic. This was also around the time that the people as currently standing at the top of the slide just distanced themselves, <laughs> according to later surveillance footage. <laughs> Third bump, whole body comes off the slide. <laughs> Except for my heels. Somehow my heels remain planted in as I skidded along those last 10 yards. They said I looked like Fred Flintstone where he's trying to stop his car, just... <laughs> Just plastic shavings flying out behind me. Finally, my feet cave way. I fall down on the slide, slapping my body down, smacking my head on the hard white plastic surface. I slide into the pool. A tall, gorgeous Swedish lifeguard jumps in to save me. Yeah, because that's how you want to be remembered. <laughs> Sven scoops down to curl me out of the water cradled me in his hairless, tanned, ripped arms. <laughs> Holds me like a baby, yells up at the spotter at the top of the slide, the heck do you let him come down for? <laughs> People snapping photos, I'm waving at everybody like Miss America with a concussion. <laughs> anyway, that's how I got a free lifetime membership. <laughs> anyway, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming out tonight.